Good morning again. It's so good to see you. I'm back in Kid City and we're hoping that it'll go well from here. I'm actually going to record this and then put it live a little bit later. I'm going to try to get done so it can be up there at 11 o'clock um, because it, I was just having too many technical problems. But it's good to see you. How is everyone doing? How How's your fear? Are you starting to get tired of being at home? Are you starting to feel kind of funny about all the weird things going on in our country right now? I can understand that. We all are gonna be a little bit um, uncomfortable, but we can know that God is always with us. Remember, we learned that from Corey, and now we're going um, and learning more from this new person, Cameron Townsend. We started his story yesterday, and um, we will continue it this week. Now, part of what I did yesterday when I didn't know if it was recording or not was to teach you this new song. And uh, I don't think that I ever got to play it for you. So I was thinking today that I would like to go over that again, and then hopefully um, it will work and you can sing along with the video. But we uh, were talking yesterday about Jesus being the good, good news and that it's something to celebrate. I love this song because it says, come on people now, don't be late. It is time now to celebrate. And in this time right now in our country when things are a little scary and they're very unusual, it's good that we can still celebrate because of Jesus. And I think that's exciting. Um, we can give thanks to him no matter what. This is, these are the words. I think I showed it to you, but I'm not sure if you got to see them before. Come on, people. Now, don't be late. It is time now to celebrate. Don't wait until everything is really uh, back to normal. Let's celebrate right now. Because why? Nothing in the world is better. Nothing in the world compares. What is nothing in the world is better? Nothing in the world compares. Well, let's go and find out. We're going to jump on in. So make sure on that part you're ready to jump. Come on, people, now jump on in. We are giving the praise to him. We can still praise the Lord no matter what. Nothing in the world is greater, guess what, than God's love for you. And when you say you, I want you to be pointing Dan God's love for you, and you, and you, and you, and so you point to different people in your family, or out the window, or wherever you see people, and that's because Jesus is the good, good news. He's the way, the life, and truth. He gave his life a sacrifice. He paid the price. Jesus is the good, good news. Uh, he's the way, the life, and truth. He forgives all our sin. He's the Lord and he's our friend. Jesus is the great good news. What an exciting song. I hope that if you haven't heard it before, you will sing along and learn this song. I'm going to try to play it for you now and hopefully you can enjoy it very much. Jesus is the good, good news.
Okay, did you like that song? Jesus is the great good news. I love that song, Did You Jump? I hope you did. That's a wonderful song, and I'm so grateful that Jesus is the good news for us. And you know, it says there he paid the price. What does that mean? Do you remember? Remember that we were all born with sin, and because we were born with sin, sin has a consequence or a punishment, and that separation from God or death. But Jesus paid that price, didn't he? He died. He sacrificed. You made your arms into a cross. He sacrificed for you and for me and for everyone so that we could receive and believe. Now, I challenged you to look up John 1, 12. Um, this is in the ESV version, and I hope that you were starting to work on that and learn it. Um, because uh, we have a song that we're going to sing that goes over this same verse. And remember it says, but to all who did receive him. And so what is receiving him? Do you guys remember about what it means to receive something? Like if I had a present right here in my hand and I said, it's for you, it's for you. It wouldn't be yours until what? You received it. You came and took it. So it's, it's saying here, all who did receive him. Who is him? Jesus. All who did receive Jesus. That means make him your own. You're, you're allowing him to be the boss. You're letting him be in charge of you. To all who, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name. Whose name? That's Jesus' name. Who believed. What does believed mean? completely trust that when he was up on that cross he took the punishment for your sin that's believing but to all who did receive him take as your own who believed in his name believed completely trust he gave the right to be, become children of God he adopted us into his family so he is our heavenly father we can never be separated from him remember last week what can separate us from the love of God nothing nothing so here is our verse John 1 12 can you say that John 1 12 good but to all who did receive him now your turn but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the, ch the children of God. He gave the right to become children of God. There's no the right there. Okay, now are you ready to learn a song to sing that verse? It's a great song and I love learning the songs that have the Bible verses as their words because it helps me to remember. Sometimes I have a harder time remembering, but if I can sing it, then I can remember it. So I want you now to stand up and get ready because we are going to sing, but to all who did receive him. John, it's John, what was it? John 1 and verse 12. All right, let's see if you can do it. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. He gave the right to become children of God. John chapter 1, verse 12. But to all who did receive him, Okay, good job. Did you get your pointer fingers going? I hope you did. That's a wonderful verse, and it's a great way to learn it. One more song today before I get into the story, and that's called Salvation Poem. 
Salvation is what we refer to when we receive Jesus and believe on him. We refer to that as being saved, saved or rescued from our sins punishment. And salvation is a word for saved. It's just a longer way to say it. So in this song, Salvation Poem, this is what it says. It's like a prayer that we can pray to Jesus. Jesus, you died upon a cross. And what's this side say? And rose again to save the lost. Look it. Their arms are in the air. Rose again. Okay, the next part says, Forgive me now of all my sin. We know that we have sin in us because everyone since Adam has been born with sin. So forgive me now of all my sin. Come be my Savior, Lord, and friend. You're inviting him. You're receiving him. Here it goes. Take, change my life and make it new. On this one, you're going to be turning around. Change my life and make it new. And help me, Lord, to live for you. Then you'll say it again. Change my life and make it new. And help me, Lord, to live, to live for you. I don't know if you know this song or if you've heard of it before, but I hope that you will sing it right now. So everybody up, up, up and get ready to sing Salvation Poem. good song did you choose to do the drums or to clap or do the air guitar which one did you play uh, I hope you played one of them because that's a lot of fun well let's get back to our story today we are learning about a man named William Cameron Townsend remember yesterday we talked about how he was born to a not so rich family in California, just outside of Los Angeles, and he had lots of chores to do. And one of his chores in the morning, do you remember? Milking the cows. Yes, I don't think any of you milked the cows today. Miss Barbara couldn't milk the cows yesterday because she had to have help pastor find his keys. So she missed her chance to help with the cows. She let me know that. So I'm glad, Miss Barbara, that you were there to help him and that you didn't have to milk the cows yesterday. Well, we learned how Cameron grew up, and remember Cameron is his middle name, but that's the name that he went by, Cameron, and he grew up, and when he was 21, he began working for $30 a month, about a dollar a day, with a Bible House of Los Angeles. He was selling 
You tell me. Bibles. He was selling Bibles. And what language had Cameron learned? He had worked on it a few years. Do you remember? Espanol. Yes, he had learned Spanish. And so after he had been working at the Bible house for a while, they asked him to go to a different country to sell Spanish Bibles. Now, I did this time finally get a map. Here's a map of all of the world. Now, can you find America? Maybe you can put your finger where you think America is. That's where we are living now, right here, United States of America. But all of this is the Americas, okay? I hope you can see that, okay? North America, this is what they call this Mexico and Central America, and then South America. Now, do you remember the name of the place that they asked Cameron to go? Do you remember that name? Guatemala. Guatemala is down in here. It is in Central America. Let me show you a better picture of just Guatemala. Here is the bottom of Mexico. Okay, so Mexico's here. And then this begins, that all of this is um, Central America, the one that's between Mexico or Northern America and South America. All right, do you see Guatemala on the map? Nicaragua, El Salvador, El Salvador, Honduras, Belize. There it is, Guatemala. There is where Cameron went. He went down to Guatemala and he was gonna sell some Spanish Bibles there. But you remember about one day he saw some men in the graveyard and they were praying to a, a person, a dead person. And he thought, oh my, and he got really close. And then he began to talk to them. And, and he said, habla espanol? He said, does anyone speak Spanish? And they just looked at him, didn't they? They didn't speak Spanish. And so he thought, oh, how can I tell them about Jesus when I, I can't talk to them? We can't communicate. They were Indians, weren't they? And they were from the Kachukel tribe. Kachukel tribe. They were Kachukel Indians, and they had their own language. It was a native language just for them, and it wasn't written. They had no alphabet, and so um, Cam thought, wow, this, this is difficult. How in the world will I be able to communicate with these people? And then he started thinking, you know, every person in the world should be able to hear the word of God in their own language. And he felt very strongly about that, that, he, that maybe he could do something to help. And when we left yesterday, he had been talking to a man named Frisco, who knew a little bit of Spanish. So because Cam knew Spanish, he could communicate with him a little and he could kind of interpret into the Kachikel Indian language for him. So he began kind of working with Frisco and talking with him. And I found a picture of Frisco and his wife. This is what they looked like back in the early 1900s. And um, they are the ones that really helped Cameron. And it was Frisco here who spoke to Cameron and said, would you consider coming and being our missionary. Do you remember that? And I said, what do you guys think? Would Cameron be able to go back and be a missionary to the Kachikel Indians? Oh, he thought, well, um, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think Cameron did? Is he gonna go back to Los Angeles and sell Bibles? Is he gonna sell Bibles there? Or will he listen to Frisco and answer his question in a positive way? He said, will you come and be our missionary? Now, a missionary is what? You guys remember? A missionary is someone who tells others about Jesus, whether it's next door neighbor that you're talking to, or it's someone all the way around the other side of the world. A missionary is a person who tells others about Jesus. But he wanted um, Cameron to come and be their missionary. 
Now, what all would that entail? Hmm, that would be a lot. Cameron really prayed about it, and he thought about it, and he must have thought, well, how can I help them and be a missionary to them without their language? I need to know their language first. That's the thing that, that I'm gonna need to learn. Um, one time, Cameron had a, a tract, you know, like our little cards that we give out that tell people about Jesus. He, and it was all written in Spanish. And he gave it to a man, but the man looked at him because the man was a Ketchikal Indian and he couldn't read Spanish. And finally he got through to uh, Cameron with this. He said, if your God loves me, why can't he speak Ketchikal? Why can't he speak our language if he loves me? And Cameron thought, wow, that's a great question, isn't it? That is such a good question. And Cameron thought, okay. He prayed about it and he felt that that's what God wanted him to do, to stay there and be a missionary to the Kachakel Indians because they needed their language to be written down so that they could have a Bible. Um, they couldn't have a Bible without words. They couldn't have words without an alphabet. And none of that had been written down for the Kachakel Indians. And so he was going to stay and work on that because he thought, that is a great question. How can I show the love of God to people when I can't understand their language and I don't have a Bible to give them that they can understand? So Cameron decided to start working and uh, to learn the Ketchikel language. He got a shoebox. Now you've had a shoebox before. I know you know what it looks like. And he got cards. And on these cards, he would write words. And Frisco would help him. So he would begin to write a word. Frisco would say a word in Ketchikel. And Cameron listened and he would write it down. And then he would write down what it meant. Now, this wasn't easy work at all because Cameron had to get the sounds right. The sounds in Ketchikel language were very distinct, different, but difficult because some of them sounded really similar to each other. And so Cameron would have to get really close to Frisco and he would watch his lips, he would watch his tongue, and he would watch his throat to see how he formed those sounds. And he saw how the throat moved, how the mouth moved, where his tongue was in his mouth when he spoke a word. Can you imagine doing that? That would be so very difficult. But he thought, I know it's not going to be easy, but I know it's worth it. Um, for example, a single word that meant the word walk, you know, you're walking. In Kachikel language, there were 10,000 different ways to say that word, that one word. Can you imagine? I can't imagine that. And so because there were all these different ways of saying things, um, Cameron was getting completely overwhelmed. I mean, he just felt like he was drowning in all these words coming at him. Oh, he was having a hard time. How am I ever going to learn all this? He really, really struggled, but he was faithful and he continued to work so very hard. He wanted to translate the Bible into Kachakel language. So he kept working and he kept figuring out the right word for this, the right word for that. And, and after a while, he began to be able to take those words and then look at the Bible and try to make it make sense in the Kachakal language. Um, he was excited to be able to do this. And when he first was able to write down that, um, that Jesus came, for you. Oh, the Kachakel Indians 
were so excited. They were overly excited. They cried and they sang and they laughed and they jumped up and down because they were so happy. And one woman said, God speaks Gachakow. It's true. He loves us. Oh, they were so excited because now they were getting to know about God and they had never been able to before. Well, Cameron was very excited for the Kachakel Indians and, and, and he was really glad that he was able to tell them that God loved them. Nothing more important. He knew that God wanted the Kachakel Indians to be saved from their sin, just like he wants you and I to be saved from our sin, like the songs we sing and the verse we went over. Well, it wasn't too long um, before um, uh, Cameron's job uh, got a little different. Um, he heard about an area in Guatemala where there were over 200,000 Cachacal Indians in this nearby village. It was in a town called San Antonio. Remember, he started off in Antigua, and now he was going to move to this town that had so many Cachacal Indians living there. And so um, he moved there so that he could um, help them. And he moved there with his wife. Cameron got married. Here is a picture of Cameron and his wife. Her name was Elvira. And they were both working there um, with the Cachacal Indians in San Antonio, Guatemala. This is what they looked like back then. I know, it's different, isn't it? It doesn't look like how we dress now, but that is how they looked in that time frame. Elvira and Cameron moved to this area and they continued working, trying to understand. Well, he rented a little piece of ground, a, 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 a piece of the land where he could live. And he thought, how am I going to make a house? There wasn't really things for them to use. And so he decided that um, he would use corn stalks. So he, you know how when the corn stalks dry out and sometimes around October and November in the fall, you might um, have some corn stalks that are dried out and put them on your porch or something for decoration. Um, I live really near a farm. It's just about a mile down the road from my house and they grow a lot of corn. And then when the corn dies off, those corn stalks are all there and then they make a maze through it. Have you ever gone into a corn maze? Those um, pieces of corn stalk get pretty thick, don't they? Well, he thought this, this would make a good wall. So Cameron used the corn stalks and he tied them together. And inside the house, he set up three poles and then he hung sheets where those poles were and that made separate rooms, separate areas. The Ketchikal Indians had never seen somebody do this before. They always lived in one big open part. And so they were so interested in what these Americans were doing. They were amazed that there was this house that he was able to make and it had separate rooms. So they often um, came to visit and they would say to their relatives, you have to go visit, you have to go see them. It's amazing to see this house of corn stalks with rooms inside. They were so thrilled with that. Um, so that's where Cameron and Elvira lived and they really enjoyed living there. Um, Elvira also spoke Spanish and she loved the Indian people as both of them did. So the people would come and visit. Now sometimes when they came to visit, they would bring gifts. Do you like gifts? I like gifts. Everybody I know likes gifts. But sometimes the gifts that the Ketchikil, Ketchikil Indians would bring were quite unusual. Like one time, can you see that up maybe? Oh, okay. Um, one time, what's shown here is a visitor came, came into the home and she said, Buenos dias, senor. She said, good day, sir. 
I bring you a treat. Hmm, I like treats. But she said, but eat them while they're still warm. Hmm, he's eating something. It's in a bowl and it's something that's warm. When Cameron looked into the bowl, his stomach felt a little weird. But he thought, eat what they eat. This is part of showing our love for the people. Do you have a hard time eating weird things? Some of us really do. I think I would have a hard time with this because in that bowl that was warm and that they gave to Cameron, it was, can you see what that is? It was tadpoles. Have you ever seen tadpoles? You know, they're the babies that become frogs eventually. It was tadpoles. Ooh, Cameron's gonna eat the tadpoles? His tummy felt a little weird, but he scooped them up. Can you pretend like you've got tadpoles in your hand? What would you do with them? They're all cooked, they're ready to eat. And he said, eat what they eat. It's how I show my love to them. So, can you eat the tadpoles? He ate the tadpoles. How weird, huh? But you see, the Kachakel Indians didn't have much food. Um, well, they had food, but not meat. And so uh, things like tadpoles would take the place of meat for them. And it was very nutritious. And actually, it didn't taste too bad. Cameron thought, okay, I think I can do this. Because all Cameron and his wife had been eating was flour tortillas and beans. And after a while, that would get hard, wouldn't it? And it's not a wonderful source of protein either. So the tadpoles were actually very nutritious <laughs> and they used them in place of meat, um, the Indians did. They also had worms and they would cook them up and use them and eat them to replace the meat. And one more thing, okay, are you ready? This, ants. Oh, would you eat the ants? Oh my goodness. I know a lot of people who have, but Cameron said, eat what they eat. This is part of showing our love for the people. He said, gracias, thank you, whenever they would give him a special treat like that. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, they had been able, Cameron and, and Elvira had been able to get some medical supplies, a few, not a whole lot. And so the Indians every day were coming to their home and they would bring their babies when they were sick and Elvira would treat them. She didn't have a whole lot of supplies, but she had more than they had. And so um, she would treat them. And so when the Indians were in their home, the Indians would talk, but when the Indians talked, they talked really, really, really fast and they couldn't catch all the words. And so Cameron and Elvira thought, this is good. If we have them continually coming into our home and we're listening to them all the time, even though it's fast and we can't catch it all, that's how we're going to learn what they're saying. That's how we're going to get better and better with the language. This is the best way to learn. Listen and talk with them and then be patient because it was gonna take a lot of time to learn. But Cameron's goal was to get the New Testament of the Bible written in the language of the Kachakel Indians. That was the goal. Um, oh, how exciting that they would have God's word in their own language. Cameron was really, really looking forward to that. But there were so many people in other parts of the world who didn't have Bibles in their languages. And that always bothered Cameron. It was in the back of his mind. He thought about it a lot. And he thought, you know what, uh, when I accomplish this, I think that there are more out there that I need to maybe be reaching out to. Well, one year went by, two years went by. How many years do you think it took until Cameron had the whole New Testament translated into Kachakel Indian language? You think three, maybe? No. How about um, five? We'll keep going up. Uh, shout your number out loud. Was it seven? Not nine. Did you say 10? <gasps> That's it. 
If you said 10, you were right. It took 10 years. Some of you are only 10 years old or not even. It took your whole lifetime for Cameron and Elvira to be able to translate the New Testament into the Kachakel Indians language. Whew. Finally, the project was finished. Oh, they were so excited that it was done. They finally had this language in writing. Oh, they couldn't believe that it had finally happened. As they were rejoicing over that and, and the uh, Ketchikel Indians were getting to know God more and, and coming to know him and accept and receive and believe him as their savior, um, Cameron started thinking and he started thinking about different parts of the world like I told you. And then he found out there was um, uh, news about Mexico. You remember um, on the map, Mexico was just above where he was at. Oh, can I find it very quickly? Here it is. You remember, here's Guatemala. Oopsie, oopsie, sorry. Here's Guatemala and then here's Mexico. So he found out that right above him there in Mexico, that there were at least 50 unwritten languages. There were at least 50 you know, people or whatever that had a language that wasn't readable, it wasn't written down, there was no alphabet. And he loved the Ketchikel Indians down in Guatemala, but would he go to Mexico? Now tomorrow, I forgot to bring something in here. So tomorrow I'm gonna show you something that Miss Barbara and Pastor have, and guess where it's from? Guatemala. Cool, huh? I want you to be thinking, what would it be? Would it be a Bible or maybe a, a top, like a blouse? Or would it be a toy? What do I have to show you from Guatemala? We'll find out tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll also find out Will Cameron move? Will he leave the Ketchikel now? And will he go to try to find all these people in Mexico who don't have a written language? Would Kev Cameron be able to help them too? I don't know, it took 10 years to learn the Ketchikel language. Did God want him to start all over again with a, a people in a language that they don't even know? Um, how to write it. So do you think he'll go to Mexico and try to translate the Bible? Well, you come back tomorrow. I'm going to show you something from Guatemala. You try to guess what it is. And we'll find out, did Cameron decide to go to Mexico? What will Cameron do next? I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to the story today and for singing those great songs and for learning that verse. You work on John 1, 12. You work on learning that. And I will see you back here tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, guys. Try to get out and get some exercise. Bye-bye.